Welcome to the game day show. Oh, taking a look at Razorback Stadium. It is a beautiful day up in Fayetteville, and the crew is all here ready to get you set up for today's matchup between the two and three Vols. Playing these two and three hogs. I'm very pumped up about it. Here in the studio, we got Mike Irwin. Mike, I'll get with you in a second. Alyssa, Hello. I think for the first time in a while, yeah. you know, first of all, this is Alyssa Cardinal today. Yeah. We're By switching way, her we're last change, name from Orange. You know, name. we got that covered. <laughs> Alyssa Cardinal here is in the studio. But uh, this is the first time in a while I feel like us mm -hmm. playing a matchup in the SEC, maybe in a couple years, that I'm expecting us, if we take care of business, we win this football game. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think this Tennessee team, again, coming off a three game losing streak and a bye week, we'll see what they do with the bye, but there's a lot of ways that you can definitely take advantage of this team. You'll see in my score prediction that I Ooh, think you're on the right track. You think so? All right. Well, uh, with that, let's bring in the rest of our crew that's down at the stadium right now. First off, I have to give a shout out to my guy, Nick Walters, putting us He's all to so shame. Sharp. He's in got a suits. suit on. Oh, I know. my goodness. We saw Nick before the show, and we like, oh, oh he in a yeah, suit. You look good, Nick. It's your uh, first game covering the Hogs this year. <laughs> Tell us your excitement. What are you expecting to see today? Yes, sir, it is. And of course, if I'm going to make the three hour trip from Little Rock, you better believe I'm going to suit up just at least a little bit, okay? So, but as far, as far as my thoughts for this game, it's going to be close on paper, two and three for each team. And of course, the Razorbacks are one and one at home, and the Volunteers are one and one at away. But look, in my opinion, with this volunteer team last year rattling off six wins at the end of the season. Those were against teams that really were not so good. Teams like not the, what Arkansas played. Arkansas was playing top 10 teams. Meanwhile, Tennessee, they were playing the UABs of the world, unranked teams like Missouri, Vanderbilt. So if you're Arkansas, you have to feel confident that they might bounce back from that Texas A&M loss. And for me, my score prediction, it would be 35-28 Arkansas. I feel like this offense is going to really bounce back from that game last week. And it's going to be a really good matchup today. Yeah, you know, I'm actually with Nick on this one. I, I think that Tennessee is struggling on both sides of the ball right now this season. I wouldn't count them out or anything like that. But as of right now, at this point in the season, Arkansas looks like a much more complete team. And as long as that offense can get the run game going again and hold on to the ball, not throw any interceptions or make some big-time mistakes, this should be a pretty solid win for the Razorbacks. Yeah, uh, a lot to look at at today's uh, matchup. We'll get back with you all a little bit later in the show. But, Mike, uh, you know, let's go ahead and look at this matchup. Break it down for us. What you got? You know, if you look at Tennessee's stats, they're middle of the pack or below in almost everything, including their offensive stats. But Sam Pittman spent all week telling us about their offensive line and how fearsome they are. And he says he knows that because he knows those guys. Uh, there's two or three of those guys that uh, I certainly was going hard after uh, at Georgia. And uh, Tennessee ended up... Uh, winning that recruiting battle. I think they're nasty. They're big, strong, very good double team guys. They can double team you and move you. It's going to be a, a slobber knocker. Arkansas's success on defense has mostly been about the secondary and the linebackers, the takeaway guys. But Pittman says the D line will have to match up well against Tennessee's O line. He's optimistic about two things. First, Julius Coates, a tremendous talent. Is starting to come around after making that transition that most JUCO players go through. Second, veteran D lineman Dorian Gerald is back on the field after an injury in the season opener. Uh, I feel like Dorian's coming along strong. You know, Dorian's uh, another JUCO guy, he's a fighter, so you know he's gonna he's gonna be working to get back. You know, he's looking good this week. You know, moving around a lot, a lot faster, a lot quicker. You know, he, uh, he, I think he's trusting it a bit more. There may well be less pressure on the Hogs' defense in this game and moving forward. The offense has been slowly progressing game to game and had its best numbers of the season against the Aggies. For the first time this year, Arkansas topped 200 yards in rushing. That excites me. I mean, it's just, it's only going to get better. I can't run by myself, you know what I mean? So the line got to do their job, and they've been doing amazing. So uh, in order to run, we need those guys, and those guys have been awesome. And then there is Felipe Franks. His numbers continue to look good, 240 yards passing per game, 30 yards rushing. But it's his ability to keep the offense out of trouble that has his coaches happy. And his leadership on the field is obvious. You couldn't ask for a better team captain on the offense and leading us in practice and leading us in meetings. And, man, I just I have so much confidence in him, man, and I would, you know, I would go, you know, fight for that guy any day. You know, because, I mean, he's the kind of quarterback that would do the same for you. Tennessee would appear to have an unsettled situation at quarterback. Jarrett Garantano's touchdown-to-turnover ratio is a concern. 
He threw two picks and passed for just 88 yards in the Vols embarrassing 34-7 loss to Kentucky. His situation is so tenuous with the fans that head coach Jeremy Pruitt had to publicly announce that Garantano is still the starter. Does Arkansas expect to see Tennessee use another quarterback in this game? Obviously, if something went wrong for him, they may. I don't know. Coach Pruitt didn't know that answer, but I'm not surprised at all that he's he was named the starter for this game. There's more to an offense than just the quarterback. Now, those of us in the media were famous for dumb questions. I don't know who asked <laughs> Sam Pittman if Tennessee was going to dump their starting quarterback, yeah. mm -hmm. but he's not going to answer that no. question. Sure. But the truth is, if he, he had all three of his picks in, in one game in, mm -hmm. against Kentucky, and that's a mystery. Mm -hmm. yep. Why did he play so badly in that game? Threw two long touchdown passes against Alabama. But that's the key to this mm -hmm. game is whether they can get him rattled. Yeah. yeah. And well, Corral threw six, and they kept him in. So yeah, they did. And he <laughs> came back and had a very good uh, game, uh, I think, a couple week. weeks later. Yep. So uh, they did all right. And we're keeping an eye on that. Actually, we're going to yeah. touch more on that quarterback situation in those picks in our breakdown. But for now, we've already had two coaches this year that know each other very well. You know, Browles playing against his brother-in-law over there at Old Miss. And we have another connection today. And for that, we're heading back down to the stadium. Tara, there's a little bit of history between uh, a couple coaches on the football field. Yeah, a little bit to say the least. You know, Sam Pittman and Tennessee offensive coordinator Jim Chaney have a lot of history together. They've actually known each other all the way back into high school when they graduated the same year and signed on to play football at Central Missouri State. Uh, years later, Chaney recommended Pittman for the offensive line coaching job at Tennessee. And after one year there, both Chaney and Pittman joined Brett Bielema's staff at Arkansas and worked together for two years before Chaney left to work in Pittsburgh. But one year later, they reunited again at Georgia and tonight they will see each other once again but just on opposite sides of the field. Him and Jim's relationship and familiarity with each other and just a lot of people uh, within Knoxville that have talked about him. Uh, very likable guy. Um, I think he's doing a really really good job um, and you can see it his team's playing hard and um, playing together. Well Jim's an offensive line coach. I mean um you know, Jim taught me a lot about offensive line play. You know, he wants to run the football. I've been with him three schools, you know. He, he believes that running the football and physical play is how you win in the SEC. And So now Jim Chaney returns to Fayetteville. And, you know, Sam Pittman actually says that the two of them usually talk every week, except, of course, for this week. They're going to wait until after tonight's game to resume their friendship. <laughs> I can't wait to see the trash talk. You know they yeah. trash oh talk each other. You were saying you know that it. earlier. Good friends like that. What a matchup. Very excited about that. And